This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Alan. Pew pew. Pew pew. Pew pew pew. Pew pew. Whoa, you might be saying. That looks a lot like the Trigicon Acupower 1-4 I reviewed many, many moons ago with the Segmented Circle. And you'd be right. It's actually extremely similar in more ways than one, and we'll touch on that as this video progresses. The reticle is the TMCQ reticle in second focal plane. I am adjusting the magnification ring. Nothing happens because that's what happens with the second focal plane. The reticle stays the same. Illumination is lacking. It's fine in darker environments like you saw in the garage, but in bright sunny days, it's just enough most of the time, not even all the time, to create contrast on a dark environment or in a, on a dark target. But the same exact thing happened with the AccuPower 1-4. to And as far as the Credo 1-4, to well, I actually have a little bit of knowledge on that, as I'll be dropping throughout the rest of this video. The illumination, however, could be much better. Just like the 2.5 to 10 PST Gen 1, the turrets are excellent. Alright, PST Gen 1, 1 to 4. We are at maximum magnification. One, Another 1 to 4 that I've gotten in the same exact week. Anyway, um, let's check out the illumination. It's subpar. Kind of like the Trigicon Power was. Anyway, we're going to shut that off. This is an MOA scope, this is a mill target, so I'm only going to be able to see if it will return to zero fairly accurately and make sure there's no funny stuff that happens as far as shifting. It looks like we might be favoring that right line a little bit, but again, it's really hard for me to be down here and try to line it up 100% perfect and clock it 100% perfect. Hertz sound and feel absolutely fantastic and it returns to zero from what I can tell very well. Windage looks good so far as well. Doesn't look like there's any play on the turrets. Nope, nice and tight. And that returns to zero well too. Not half bad. So far, we have excellent turrets, a decent tracking performance, and okay illumination. But what about the glass? And that's probably the most important thing, because the PST Gen 1, 2.5 to 10, I absolutely praise the glass on. It's excellent. And here, you could already see at 1x, we have a very flat image. We pass over these power lines, and there's almost zero movement or distortion to them. It is fantastic. And this is why I like lower magnification LPVOs in particular, especially this 1 to 4. A lot of people knock it, but I don't think the detriments of having slightly less magnification um, overpower the fact that you just have less magnification. I'd much rather have a clearer, sharper, flatter, more usable image than just more magnification. Illumination here is daytime visible, which is pretty decent, and that's about as good as it's going to get. 
but you know what, there are a lot of newer LPVOs that are out that still have about the same brightness settings. And keep in mind, this thing's gotta be at least six or seven years old. I've seen some reviews as far back as 2016, so to know that it's still about as bright as probably the Strike Eagles is pretty damn good. Not only that, but look at the image here at 4X at 30 yards. It's fantastic. And then factor in the price as well. It's about $280 right now, still brand new from EuroOptics.com. Um, no, I do not have an affiliate with them. It's just they're one of the cheapest places right now. So if you like what you see, you can get this thing brand new for a fair bit cheaper than the Strike Eagles. But look at this image here at 400 yards. At 4X, everything is basically in focus. The tree line at about 200, well, actually, <laughs> what am I saying? The 30 yard power transformer was very sharp and clear. Tree line about 200, 250. The brick building at 400 and those power towers off in the distance at about 800. It's a very beautiful, usable image. Granted, the brightness of the day and the coloration of early morning and beginning of spring is a little off-putting, but there's very little to no chromatic aberration or any sort of optical issues whatsoever because this is only a 1 to 4. It's only a 4X magnifier. As a result of that, the glass doesn't get stressed out at all. You're not asking too much of it, and you get a really flat, usable 1X like you saw. And here, an extremely nice and beautiful 4X. And that's one of the reasons why I stick with my P4XI. If you haven't seen my Woodland Brutality video, I shot that with my P4XI. Anywhere from 1.5 to 4X, and I did, in my opinion, extremely well with it because I keep it simple. The acronym KISS is perfect for what I consider true for most things in life. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't overcomplicate things. Don't have a, a, a crazy reticle. And we'll talk about the reticle on this in a little bit, but just keep it simple. And this is about as simple as it gets. As far as lighting in light and darker environments, here we are, it's about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Again, early spring, the sun's already gone down a long time ago, slightly overcast, perfect environment to sort of showcase and see how much light transmission we're gonna get through this thing. At 1x here, it looks basically accurate to what we're seeing outside, so very, very good. But you're really going to notice the issues when you increase the magnification. But again, because we only have a 4x magnifier here at 4x, it there's no real discernible notice, noticeable difference in the brightness coming through it. It's great. Illumination, though, is still lacking. It's one of those things. Uh, Illumination was probably the weakest link in a lot of older LPVOs and optics in general, and this is just one such example. For many of you out there, though, that's not going to be a real issue considering the reticle that we have to play with. And I like this reticle more than the segmented circle from Trigicon. There you go. I said it. Using these both, not back to back, there's been quite some time difference between the two. I think this is just a little bit better because the center dot's a little bit larger on this and the actual circle seems a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side with this very soon, but let's continue talking about the pros on this thing. Just like we already saw with the 1X, it's a flat, beautiful image. Look at the back of the berm and the targets. It's almost perfectly lined up, as is the concrete wall on either side of the range. As far as eye box goes, we'll talk about that soon, but there's almost no fish eyeing or distortion to this thing. It's fantastic. Now, to give you some sort of representation of what you could expect from other 1-4 to LPVOs in about the same price point, we have on the right the SIG Tango 4 in first focal plane. In my opinion, it had some flaws, the SIG, but the 1X was not one of them. Just like this PST, it was very flat, very forgiving. It was fantastic. <laughs> but look how small the reticle is here at 1X. You can barely pick it up. Whereas on the PST, it's a nice noticeable blob right in the middle. So it's not a one for one, but this is the best sort of footage I could roll into this to really at least give you an idea of how this thing stacks up against some of its competition. Can you still find the Tango 4 1 to 4? Uh, they're few and far between, but they are available. Why not compare this to a Strike Eagle? Well, I don't think it really matters much with the feature specs, but the image quality on this absolutely just defecates all over the Strike Eagles, whether it's the 1 to 6 or the 1 to 8 and slowly bring up the magnification here at 4X, what are you gonna expect other than what we've already seen? A very beautiful image. Yeah, you can have a one to six, a one to eight, a one to 10, hell, even a one to 12. But here you're getting a very usable extreme on either end. And in my opinion, that's more important because you're not dealing with any of the optical issues. Like I said, bad fish shine, chromatic aberration, soft edges, any of that stuff. 
This, it's just, boom, boom, I want you in my room. Let's spend the night together from now until forever. The only video footage I have of the AccuPower 1 to 4 is, unfortunately, back when I, before I started standardizing on my video. So as a result, this is as good as it's going to get. But the image is atrocious. Yes, I was filming with a different camera at the time. Things have changed a lot. It's also in the middle of winter as opposed to here, which is early spring, like I had said. But you can clearly see that there is an image quality issue with the Trigicon. But see, what about the new Credo 1 to 4? Is it any better than the AccuPower? Well, Hoplop Pile, which I'm sure I butchered the pronoun pronunciation of his name, actually has been in communications with me because he got a Credo 1 to 4 and had the exact same sort of issues with it as I did with this AccuPower. They're just not great for whatever reason. As far as the iBox goes on this PST Gen 1, the 1X is fantastic. Because we have a second focal plane reticle, the illumination stays visible even when you're deep into the shadows. Albeit, it's very not that noticeable, but you can still pick it up enough to help transition you to find perfect center right behind the optic. It's forgiving in every sort of direction. It's just very, very nice. Increasing the magnification here to 2X, and you can see it's still very open and forgiving. We can get very far behind it and still have a beautiful image going through it. There is a little bit of grease on the glass. Um, my 1022 I just oiled up and it spewed some on the back and I didn't notice it until now when I'm editing video, but that's just the way it is. Here at 4X at its top magnification range, it's still fairly forgiving and you can still see the illumination off in the shadows. It's just one of the big perks of having a second focal plane reticle on an LPVL and just not that much magnification. It's just a great combination in my opinion and one that I still feel is just se severely overlooked. More magnification does not necessarily mean you're going to become either a better shooter, number one, shoot better groups, number two, or just be more consistent, number three. In fact, in my opinion, from my own personal findings with how I am as a shooter, the more magnification you have, the more it shows off all of your imperfections behind it, the more you get in your own head to try to control your breathing, your heartbeat, and or all your muscles to keep steady on target, and then you just end up throwing yourself out of whack. Now, if you are trying to engage targets at great distances, yes, you're going to need more magnification to even see them, but for the vast majority of people out there, I think they really need to pull back on what they think is more important. More important for some people is, oh, bigger is better, more is, more is better. And I don't think that is the case in most cases. There. I don't think you're going to need a, a higher, larger caliber over a 223 unless you know you need to take down big game or you need to push out really, really far and make a hit. It's just the way it is. Um, and the same thing goes for magnification. One to four is perfectly fine. You see so many people out there with magnifiers behind red dots that are, that are three X's, and that's a perfect combination. But now you see so many magnifiers coming out, five, six X. Who's Someone's going to be making an eight X magnifier. And you're going from one to eight X. It's like, what about everything in between that? You know, like two X, three X, those are really, really practical magnification ranges. And you're just going to bypass all that? Like, I don't know. It's just different strokes for different folks for sure. But I think people really need to rethink their habits a little bit as far as the image quality on this thing goes no matter where we are here at 200 yard line it is fantastic it's fantastic from 30 yards to infinity and it's just beautiful now the question will come in will i buy one i don't have a need for this but if vortex is listening which i highly doubt it um please 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 just make a pst gen 2 1 to 4 keep it really simple cap turrets second focal plane really bright illumination a, a simplish reticle and keep the price under 500 bucks if you could do that while maintaining a weight of like around 17 ounces or less that would be even better and you know what i bet it would sell like hotcakes i would absolutely buy one of those because i don't see the need to have exposed target turrets on a, on most lpvos with the exception of like the AccuPower one to eight first focal plane with that reticle i think it works extremely well but on a one to four like this it just doesn't really add up or make sense i don't mind the reticle on this i think it's fine and pretty usable because guess what you might be wanting to shoot a 22 223 308 65 blah 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 you have at least mill dropped reticle on this so this way you could figure out your own dope and figure out where it's going to shoot at whatever distance you might be shooting at and that's fine you know, it's better than just having a standard duplex, in my opinion. 
One last budget sort of minded comparison would be this or the Tango MSR. The Tango MSR is something I own. I bought it to test it and I liked it so much I kept it. And because it's so inexpensive, I mean, yes, they've gone up in value now to about like the mid 300s with the Alpha Mount, but the Alpha Mount is excellent and the Optic is excellent. I would probably go for the MSR simply because it's 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 more in line to what I'm looking for out of an LPVO. But if you're looking for a exposed turret one to four like this, this is absolutely fantastic. And Alan said he's had this thing for years and put thousands of rounds through it, plenty of range trips, and here it is just chugging away like it was fresh off the showroom floor. It just works. And that's what's really nice about the PST lines from Vortex, they just work, which is why if they made a one to four Gen 2, basically a mini version of the one to six, it would be incredible. And I would own multiples of those, especially if they were under 500 bucks, because it would be just the creme de la creme, basically a P4XI for the modern age. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel, but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can help by using the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.